This symposium is very timely. Um, it, it, it's done every five or six years. Um, but we, you know, I, I come from the developing world. And sometimes we have this feeling that uh, donors are not very keen to continue to support capacity development because they, they, they think they don't see uh, much returns coming from it. And so it, it's very important that we all re look back at the whole, whole problem uh, and if we look at it in a holistic way, we would realize that there is still so much gaps in terms of capacity and we need to to build up capacity both in individuals as well as in organizations. And what has also come out is that we have to be looking into the future because if we are talking about sustainability, we need to be sure that there will be people who will continue with this good work into the future. And yet we are seeing uh, that a lot of our young people, the, the best and the brightest uh, they, they are leaving the water sector for other sectors. They go into banking, they go into economics, into finance. Uh, and so we, we, we need to reorientate how we do things so that we can attract them to come back and retain them in the sector. And uh, I'm very optimistic that the outcome of this symposium would give us fresh insight into how to solve this problem and to come up with new programs that would ensure that we are more sustainable in terms of uh, water resources management. The expert group meeting was a very interesting process. Uh, you know, we, we had in that room 1,000 years of experience uh, because we had people who had 45 years of experience to people who have 10 years or so of experience. Uh, and, and what struck me was the, that when we were asked to look back at what are the most important issues relating to water management, uh, the need for leadership came up at the top. And this has also been my experience working in the water field for the last 35 years. That whenever we see uh, an institution or an organization with good leadership, then we see success. Uh, when leadership is weak, then we find that there's a lot of problems which translates back to people, the stakeholders, feeling the problems of not enough water or too much water or too dirty water. And so the, the group looked at, at these issues and the group tries, tries to come up with, uh, with possible solutions. And, uh, and this would be brought back to the symposium. And hopefully at the end of the three-day symposium, uh, we will all be better prepared to move ahead because there are very challenging things ahead, especially in water management. What do you think is the benefit from you to be here and uh, what are the um, experiences you think you can take from this symposium? Well, I think that uh, it, it is really the core of uh, the discussion here is capacity building and uh, uh, so far we are still uh, in the middle of the first day but it's obvious that everybody is very concerned about how to reach the problems and address the problems in the countries that are lacking water access and sanitation in proper terms and addressing or how to match the MDGs properly and so I think that the educational uh, challenge is really how to match also different contexts and different realities and never think that you have a solution that will fit all and will solve all the problems universally but on the contrary understand the context and different uh, specificities of the problems and uh, go and uh, meet the, this these uh, differences in, on the field and uh, I think that the co-learning uh, methodology that uh, we're trying to develop is really based in exactly on that. Uh, so I think that for me it's quite interesting to see what are the challenges also uh, addressed here today and to share this concern that we've been having and how, to, how can we develop a real new 
dimension of uh, practice inside the water world, which is how to work in knowledge exchange and uh, education and learning. I prefer the word learning to education because I think it's more clearly a bidirectional process. How, how can we really improve uh, the way we are, have been acting in this field of learning and promote uh, better sharing of knowledge in order to address better the problems that have different uh, specifications in different contexts, in different regions of the world and that we cannot forget is not uh, possible. Uh, it was never possible but it's, it's more clear now that it's not possible to have one only solution. And uh, we were just uh, discussing this in a panel session now, it was said by Andres very clearly. It would be very interesting to have uh, Delft going to the to the places where the problems are and I agree completely 100% with that. I think that's exactly what we have to start doing when you talk about learning uh, better to manage better the water we have in the world. Um, I heard that there are lots of Australians in the conference and um, I was, um, yeah, I, I would like to know why. What is the, why are you so interested in capacity building? What do you think or do you expect this conference will offer you? Right, okay, thanks. Um, and it's a great pleasure to be here, thank you very much. <laughs> um, I guess there's a couple of levels to that. There's a personal level, I'm very interested in capacity building in the water sector. Um, there's also at a national level, Australia has a great need to develop capacity in its water, water management. Um, we have a, a deficit of skills that we need to build on. And, and we have many challenges in Australia. It's a country that goes from floods to droughts in a blink of an eye sometimes. And, and we really have to build our capacity to be able to deal with that. Um, and then there's the, the third level, which is the global level. And, and Australia has a role to play uh, in developing the capacity in the world to deal with the water challenges that are coming.